from D. James Kennedy Ministries. This is Kennedy Classics. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. Hello, I'm Frank Wright, president of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. Welcome to Kennedy Classics. Just a few weeks ago, a new Congress was sworn in. It contains two new Congresswomen who are members of the Democratic Socialists of America, who advocate single-payer government health care and halting economic progress in the name of so-called climate justice, among other things. And they are not alone. Support for socialism is growing in America, especially among younger generations. Socialism is born out of the philosophy of Karl Marx, and it has an explicitly atheistic foundation. Marx called religion the opium of the masses and saw human beings as primarily economic creatures, far from the picture of mankind presented in the Bible. Socialism's atheistic roots are why it simply does not work anywhere. Yet people continue to push for it, as though this time it will be somehow different. Dr. D. James Kennedy was a relentless opponent of socialism because it's so completely unbiblical and anti-God. He shares more about the consequences of this rejection of God in his classic message, The Disease of Godlessness. And now may we hear the Word of God as it's found in the book of Psalms, Psalm 33, beginning with verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song, play skillfully with a loud noise, for the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. And may God speak to our hearts and minds today through this portion of his holy word, and may his name ever be praised. Amen. Woodrow Wilson said, Americans no longer remember what we were, and therefore they do not know what we are. And consequently, they do not know what we are trying to do. I'm afraid as a nation we have experienced collective historical amnesia directed specifically at Christianity. Indeed, if Uncle Sam, the personification of our country, came before a physician today, I'm afraid that the diagnosis would be very serious. It might even be terminal. America is sick, dangerously ill. Uncle Sam is sick in the head because he has been taught lies and he does not know where he came from, how he was brought up, or why he is here. He is sick in the stomach because he has been consuming a diet of pornography, vileness, trash, evil of every kind, ungodly philosophies, blasphemy, profanity, every manner of evil. He is sick in his hands because they seem compelled to commit an unprecedented number of robberies and rapes and murders. He's sick in his heart, and it is a sickness unto death unless something is done. 
because his passions are turned away from God unto all manner of carnal lusts. Yes, my friends, the problem is not merely the economy. Somebody asked me this week, what is the name of this disease that America is suffering from? Well, let me say, the name of the disease that America is dying from is godlessness. A godless elite have taken over virtually every major institution of this country, and they are perverting, distorting, and poisoning the body politic, the whole nature of our country. The problem is one of godlessness, of unrighteousness, of immorality of every kind. I can't help but think of the words of Alexander Solzhenitsyn, probably the great prophetic writer of the 20th century, who said that when he was but a young fellow, he heard one of the peasants in the Soviet Union say, the problem is we have turned our backs upon God and we have destroyed ourselves. Dr. Paul Witz of New York University headed that uh, great blue ribbon panel that examined all of the history books and uh, social studies books, sociology texts used in our public schools back in the mid 80s. The, the committee examined those and came to the clu conclusion that almost all reference to the Christian foundations of America have been expurgated from these texts, and it would appear that the writers, editors, and publishers of our textbooks seem to have a virtual paranoia against Christianity. George Washington, in his farewell address, said, reason and experience both forbid us to expect that national morality can prevail in exclusion of religious principles. And John Adams, our second president, said the same. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. And we are discovering now that we can hardly govern ourselves at all. And he said further, we have no government armed with power, capable of contending with human passions, unbridled, by morality and religion. And yet the intellectual elite of this country, whether found in the media or in academia or government or wherever, they have done their very best to destroy the foundations both of morality and religion, which George Washington called the twin pillars upon which this nation stands. And further he said, let no man who labors to undermine those pillars of human happiness dare to claim the title of patriot. And yet, my friends, today they do that very thing. What hubris it is that these people, with such arrogant pride, with such intellectual snobbery, suppose themselves to have the advanced, the modern, the wonderful new answers to human problems when they have created a veritable chaos in this country. And they say that the only thing they need to make things better is simply more money. How stupid can we be? The problem is not economics. The problem is godlessness. We need to remember who we are. And we need to cease being ashamed of our God. America said one is the only nation in the world which is ashamed of its God. It's time for Americans to stand up and boldly declare how this nation was founded, what it was intended to be, and what its purposes were, and roll that back. Though I will say there is, of course, a moral element in the economy. 
There is a moral element in the matter of debt. When you create debt with no real intention of repaying it, all you're doing is stealing. We are stealing from our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren in this country today. That is sin. I wonder if you remember back before the last presidential election that for about six months, every night on every major news program, we saw a digital clock which showed us how rapidly the national debt was growing. And we heard story after story about the tremendous problems that this was going to create for our country in years to come and what we were foisting off on our children and grandchildren. And that clock continued to spin. We had a problem. We had a grave problem. This nation was in trouble if we didn't do something about it. We needed change. And a presidential candidate ran on the pattern of change. And he, and he won. How many of you have seen that clock since then? It disappeared right off the face of the earth. All we hear about now is the people who are going to be hurt by efforts to reduce the deficit and the debt. Isn't that amazing? You don't suppose there's a media bias involved, do you? No, of course not. Alexis de Tocqueville, the famous philosopher, historian, who came here in 1830, made this perceptive statement which we have forgotten and which we need to remember. Among the many things he said in Democracy in America was this statement. As he looked with eagle eye into the future and saw what would be the end of the American Republic, he said, America will last until... And I wonder how many here know what he said would bring about the demise of this republic. America will last until the populace discovers that it can vote for itself largesse out of the public treasury. Has America discovered that? I think there's no doubt, but that they have. And today, politicians, and you certainly could not call them statesmen, run on simply the platform, I will give you more largesse out of the public treasury than will my opponent. And so, based on that immoral presupposition, America sinks deeper into the abyss of debt. We are now in greater debt than any other nation in history, but that's nothing. We are in greater debt than all of the other nations of the world combined. And we're doing this to our grandchildren. And what do we say? We're entitled. Hogwash. It's stealing from your children. Well, what is the cure? There's no cure for godlessness except God. It is a return to the foundations that made this country great. We have turned our backs upon God, and we need to return unto him. It has been said by one historian that never in the history of the world has any nation in so brief a span of time turned its back upon its God. Upon its God, upon its religion, upon its morals, its ethics, its traditions, its culture. Folks, it's time for Christians to get mad and say enough is enough. 
and I'm going to do something about it. Because in the final analysis, my friends, much of the blame must be laid right at our doorstep, right at the doorstep of the church, of pastors that won't say anything about any matter that is controversial, lest they step on somebody's toes. Did I step on your toes today? Tough. You needed them stepped on. Much of the blame must be laid right at the feet of Christians who have not been obedient to the Great Commission. I remember 20 years ago, a Christian said to me, you don't really believe that Christians should get active in politics, do you? And I said with tongue in cheek, why, of course not. We ought to leave it to the atheists. Otherwise, we wouldn't have anything to complain about. And we'd really rather complain than do something, wouldn't we? And that's exactly what's happened. That's why we have the mess that we have in this country today, what's called a post-Christian culture in America today. And I think about a church outside of Houston I heard about this week. Only 1,200 people, the people in one of these sections or so, 1,200 people in a town of 30,000, and they said enough is enough. And they became active. They hadn't been before. You know what happened? Three of the city commissioners of five are in their church. Three of the board of education of five are in their church. So is the attorney general and uh, the mayor and I don't know what else. All kinds of the leaders of that community are in that church and they are transforming that city for good. Gary Bauer, who will be with us in Reclaiming America, who is a, a great man of God, a great American. I talked to him in Memphis night before last. And uh, he's published a, a small book that produces the results of some studies of theirs. What would happen if Christians reclaimed America? And he said, from the State House to the White House, from the local courts to the Supreme Courts, and the presidents of universities and the education system, and the whole kettle of fish. And he said, the results were so astonishingly positive that even unbelievers, when presented with that, were very favorably impressed. Can you imagine what it would mean to this country? It would be a new birth of freedom and righteousness and godliness and morality. But Christians need to get involved. Why, if every Christian in America merely registered and voted, that would make a difference. Might I say to you that it would be well for you to vote for Christians to rule over you? Now you say, my, my, that, sound, that sounds very discriminatory. Uh, we shouldn't say something like that. Well, it wasn't my idea. I was simply quoting John Jay. I won't ask you how many of you know who John Jay was. He was the first chief justice of the first Supreme Court. He was appointed by George Washington, one of the great founders of this country. He, along with uh, Madison and Hamilton, wrote the Federalist Papers which sold the colonies on the Constitution. One of the greatest founders of our country, John Jay, Chief Justice, said that God has given us a Christian nation and it is the privilege and duty and responsibility of Christians to prefer Christians for their rulers. One of the problems today, we just haven't got enough of them running for office to even prefer. Anybody got any ideas? Maybe God is speaking to you. And secondly and lastly, we need to be involved in sharing the gospel of Christ with people. You cannot impose a Christian culture on a godless society. And because of our apathy and our indifference and our failure to, failure to obey the Great Commission, we have allowed to rise up around us a whole nation of people that not only know not Joseph, as the scripture says, but know not Jesus and who don't know the Savior because we have not shared with them the gospel. Ah, dear friends, to my dying breath, I will be urging you 
to share the good news of Christ with others. It is the responsibility of everybody who claims to be a follower of Jesus. Have you been doing that? Did you do it this week? Did you do it this year that's passed? Have you even bothered to invite somebody to church? Do you realize that just by inviting people to church, you could change this country? That they might hear the gospel and their hearts could be changed? That's what it's all about. If we will become faithful to what God has told us to do. Ah, dear one, may we begin today to determine that we are going to be salt in a corrupting body politic, that we are going to bring the light of the gospel into the darkness of a lost world, that the good news of Jesus Christ may ring out again and the tidings of salvation and eternal life will become the blessed possession and privilege and joy of people throughout this nation. And this country will change. And the patient will get well. May it be. And may it begin with you. Let us pray. Father, change this nation, we pray. We ask that you will, by your Holy Spirit, work in our hearts and the hearts of all of those that are listening by radio and watching by television, that we may take seriously your command that we are to be salt and light, that we are to render unto Caesar and unto thee those things that belong to each, that we may be used in our generation, in our time, to change this nation and this world from godlessness to godliness and bring it back to thee, that in truth, once more, that the sovereign might be enthroned, even Christ the Lord. In his name we pray, amen. As a believer in Christ, I hope Dr. Kennedy's charge to be salt and light has encouraged you today. But perhaps you're watching this program and you want to know how to become a Christian and what it means to place your trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. The scripture tells us that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Jesus Christ offers us the gift of eternal life and peace with God in this world and the next as a free gift. Isn't that amazing? We don't deserve it, but it's his gift to us. He paid the debt we owed for our sins by shedding his blood on the cross. And if you would like to receive this priceless gift, you can pray with me right now. Lord Jesus Christ, I know that I'm a sinner and not worthy of your mercy, but I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me, and make me brand new. I place my trust in you alone. Thank you for offering me an abundant life filled with purpose and joy, and I pray this in your name. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, then you have begun the greatest new adventure of your life. And to help you, we want to send you a book written by Dr. Kennedy. It's called Beginning Again, and that's exactly what you're doing. In these pages, you'll learn how to study the Bible, how to pray, and even how to share your new faith with others. To receive your copy of Beginning Again, just write to the address below or call our toll-free number. And may God richly bless you. As Dr. Kennedy laments, America needs to come back to God and change our great nation. When we are immersed in godlessness, we are setting ourselves up for destruction. Nowhere is that more clear than the increasing embrace of socialism, especially among the young. It's taught in our universities and public schools, and it's showing up at the ballot box where open socialists are now 
routinely winning elected office. That's why it's so important to know the truth and to be able to share it with others. We have developed a vital resource that you will not only want to get for yourself, but for your children and grandchildren who are increasingly under the sway of godless socialism. It's the new book, The Coming Socialist Wave, Biblical Answers to Socialist Lies. This important and practical book uncovers the lies of socialism and counters them with biblical truth. It features chapters showing that socialism impoverishes nations, is at war with the family, is at war with the church, and much more. We will send it to you as our thanks for your generous donation to help this ministry to continue producing programs like this one, as well as the ongoing work of this ministry as we stand for truth and defend your freedom. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 888-332-3069, or you can go online to djkm.org. And if you're able to give a donation of $50 or more, we will send you the book plus the new DVD, What's Wrong with Socialism? Featuring interviews with General Jerry Boykin of the Family Research Council, Dr. Albert Moeller of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, Brigitte Gabriel, and others. This DVD also contains documentary features on the growing plague of socialism, especially among younger Americans, and how to stop it. We will send you the DVD, What's Wrong with Socialism?, plus our newly published book, The Coming Socialist Wave, Biblical Answers to Socialist Lies, as our thanks for your generous donation of $50 or more. And you will be helping us investigate, document, and expose the socialist movement in America on programs like this through our ongoing federal lawsuit against the corrupt Southern Poverty Law Center and more. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11164, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 888-332-3069, or go online to djkm.org. I'm Frank Wright. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Kennedy Classics. We'll see you next time. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.